welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So another week in the cabin, trying out another filming location. I'm convinced that I'm probably just not gonna find a good place to film in here. We're only here for a few more weeks and then I haven't found it yet, but this week, we're sitting on the coffee table. Okay, so in this video, I wanna talk about some zero waste swaps that I've tried that I do not recommend, that I regret trying, that really just haven't worked for me. And I just wanna caveat this entire video by saying just because these don't work for me doesn't mean that they're not gonna work for you. But I also just wanna be honest in that every zero waste swap that I try, isn't a winner. Sometimes I have to find alternative solutions or in some cases just find a way to not use that type of product because for whatever reason, it just doesn't work for me. All right, let's talk about some regrets. So the first thing I put on my list is recycled aluminum foil. I really only have access to one brand of recycled aluminum foil, and it's made by a company called If You Care. And I've tried both their regular aluminum foil and they have a heavy duty one. They just are not very good quality. They rip really, really easily. Even the heavy duty one is not really heavy duty. And I kept buying it for a long time because I wanted to use recycled aluminum and I couldn't find any alternatives until one day I was like, what if I just try not using aluminum foil? And so that's what we do now. We don't even use foil anymore. We found alternatives, other ways to do things that we were using aluminum foil for in the past. But really this just felt like a lower waste swap that was causing us more headache and making more messes than it was really worth. The next swap that I would not recommend and completely regret buying is the last swap. I talked about this in a previous video and I will link that video down below if you wanna hear like a whole in-depth review on last swab. Last swab, the first product they came out with was essentially a reusable cotton swab type thing. I say cotton swab type thing because there's actually no cotton involved. The entire thing is plastic but you can use it for the types of things that you'd use cotton swabs for. So I particularly was looking for something that I could clean my ears with. I know a lot of people love the last swab, but I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. It didn't fit in my ear properly. It actually ended up snapping in half not too long after I got it. So I was cleaning my ear like maybe too aggressively and the entire thing like snapped off in my ear. I felt like they weren't really transparent about their sustainability as a company. I do think that some of that may have improved since I first bought mine. Because it's made of plastic, it's not absorbent. I didn't really find that it was actually cleaning anything off my ears. It just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And in the end, because it broke, it just ended up in the landfill. The plastic material that it's made of is not in any way recyclable. I just had to throw it away. So instead of that, I do use a bamboo cotton swab that has organic cotton tips on it, and I throw those in my compost. So while ideally I feel like I would want something that is infinitely reusable, it would be less resource intensive than what I use now, I just couldn't make it work for me. Next up are beeswax wraps or plant-based wraps. These were actually one of the first zero waste swaps that I made in my life many, many years ago. One of the first things I did was get rid of single-use plastic wrap and replace it with this. And they do have a beeswax kind and they have a plant-based one that is vegan. It doesn't use any beeswax. And I've tried both of them and I just don't find that they work that well. And I did try and make it work for a really long time. I kept these around for years because I made the excuse that I was living in the Northeast of the United States where it's really cold. And so when it wouldn't stick to either the bowl or itself or whatever I was covering, I was like, oh, because it's so cold, like the wax isn't getting warm enough to actually make that sticky connection. And then I moved to the desert where it's like 120 degrees and it still didn't work. And I was like, okay, maybe these just don't work. And I've tried all the tricks, you know, you're supposed to warm it up with your hands and all that kind of stuff. And it just doesn't make a secure seal. I would much rather just put food in a container with a lid than try and fight with these wax wraps anymore. I actually think I might still have some in my kitchen in Joshua Tree. If you don't know, this is not my house. I am in Maine for the summer in this cabin, but in our primary residence in Joshua Tree, I think there's still some in my kitchen, but it's sort of in the back of my head now to declutter that when I get home. Next up is a cream-based mineral sunscreen. I've tried a lot of non-toxic reef safe sunscreen that comes in non-plastic packaging. So I've actually found quite a few sunscreens that I feel like really work and come from really sustainable companies. That's not really the problem. The problem is that pretty much all of them leave my skin completely white. 
for me to put on enough sunscreen for it to actually work because most of them have like a zinc cream base to them it's just like completely white on my skin and it sometimes will take hours or never absorb in at all and it drives me crazy especially living out in the desert it's sunny there 360 days a year right like almost every day of the year is sunny there so me and my husband really want a sunscreen that we like and that we like putting on our skin and doesn't make us feel like we're painting our skin all white like a ghost so i actually very recently found an alternative that is not a cream based sunscreen that is just perfection. The name of the brand is Skinnies. I will link it down below. I'm a huge fan. When you look at their products, you're going to be like, whoa, the sunscreen is really, really expensive. And it is, but it's a gel-based sunscreen and a tiny little bit goes a long way. We bought our first bottle of it almost a year ago, maybe like nine months ago, and it's still going. So while yes, it's going to look expensive, it's going to last a really long time and it's totally worth it. It rubs in really well. It's non-toxic. It's reef safe. Their packaging is compostable. I just love it and I'm never going to go back to a cream-based mineral sunscreen ever again. Next up is paper tape. So I'm not ready to give up on paper tape completely yet, but I am yet to find a brand that works. I'm specifically thinking about when I'm trying to tape a cardboard box, if I'm going to ship something out or mail something out. It's just not that sticky. It doesn't do the same job as like plastic packing tape. Like I said, I'm not going to give up on it yet. I've tried two different brands so far. And what's tricky is I thought at first that it worked. When I first got paper tape, I think I might have even talked about it in a video. I'm like, this is a game changer. I'm so excited about this until I tried to tape a box shut. And I was like, wait, it doesn't stick to cardboard. That's a problem. But it does stick to other materials. I'm going to keep looking for a brand that works well. If any of you know a brand that really works, especially for packing and shipping something, please leave me a comment down below. I am so on the hunt for something that will work. Next up is natural deodorant. I will say that my opinion on this might be a little bit dated because I gave up trying to find a deodorant a few years ago. And I feel like especially in the last like 12 or 18 months, there's been a lot of new companies on the market. But I regret how how many types of deodorant I tried and how much money I wasted on natural deodorants that didn't work. I tried everything. I can't even tell you how many brands I tried and none of them worked. Either my skin broke out or it didn't really do anything to cover or hide any smell. Some of them made me sweat more. It was a real disaster. And then eventually, sort of like with the aluminum foil, I was like, do I need deodorant? So then I just tried going without deodorant and it's totally fine. But before I had spent so much money and time and wasted so many products, I wish I had just thought earlier to just say, maybe I should just give up deodorant. So if you're struggling to find a natural deodorant that works, maybe try a week or two or a month without deodorant and see how that goes. I've mentioned not wearing deodorant in like several videos and there's always someone in the comments who's like, ew, you stink and you don't know it, you're gross. This isn't smell of vision You don't know if I stink. Stop it. All right, the last thing on the list of zero waste products that I don't recommend and regret buying are essential oils. I know. I feel like in the zero waste community, essential oils are used for everything. There's a ton of products that are DIY with essential oils. I do use some lemon essential oil and what I clean with, but what I don't recommend is using essential oils for everything and using a lot of essential oils, like diffusing them. Essential oils are so resource intensive to produce. When you think about like a lavender essential oil and what goes into producing that and how much lavender you need to get that concentrated extract, it's enormous. And just like the amount of land and resource and energy that goes into that. So while I do think that there are a lot of great things about essential oils, my recommendation is to just use them sparingly instead of having that be a replacement for all fragrance in your life. All right, that's it for this week's video. If there are zero waste swaps that you've tried that haven't worked out for you, let me know in a comment down below. I'm always interested in your experience and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe down below that helps my channel a lot give this video a thumbs up if you liked it follow me on Instagram and I will see you next Tuesday bye everyone ready set go ah, mosquito ah, so many mosquitoes I'm getting nowhere this is taking forever okay focus when I was little I used to take piano lessons and when I would mess up I would take my fingers and run them across the keys like this. My piano teacher hated it. She's like, you have to break that habit because every time you mess up, you're going to go like this. My equivalent to that in my YouTube life is going like this. Every time I mess up, I just automatically go. I have to stop.
It would probably make editing easier if I stopped. Wait, what's the next one? I don't remember. The 